This video is a continuation of part 1 of one-way maneuver in XPSS. In that video, I demonstrated how the data was analyzed in XPSS and these are the results that we have produced in that video. If you have not seen that video, I hereby encourage you to please see or watch that video first to learn how the maneuver analysis was performed in XPSS. The link to the video is given in the description section of this video below. But without further ado, let's begin the interpretation of this resource. My name is Titokan and this is Titokan Max Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. The first table here is between subjects factors. As you can see, this table displays the number of groups in our independent variable fish, which is 1, 2, and 3 groups, consisting of catfish, tilapia, and carp. Each group has sample size of 20 cases each. The second table is the descriptive statistics table. This table displays the mean and standard deviation of the different weight of the three fishes cultured with local feeds and foreign feeds respectively. As you can see, the mean weight of the fishes based on local feeds are relatively the same. For example, the mean weight of catfish is 69.21 kg, tilapia is 68.23 kg, and the mean weight of carp is 70.46 kg. Similarly, the mean weight of the fishes based on foreign feeds are relatively the same. Again, the mean weight of catfish is 33.39 kg, the mean weight of tilapia is 64.64 kg, and carp is 66.75 kg. In both cases, the carp seems to have more effective weight but the total means weight of the fishes is 69.30 kg for local feeds and 64.92 kg for foreign feeds respectively. In both cases, the carp fish seems to have more effective weight, but the total means weight of the fishes is 69.30 kg for local feeds and 64.92 kg for foreign feeds respectively. However, looking at the descriptive statistics, the mean weight of the fish based on local fees and foreign fees do not seem to be significantly different, but such a judgment will be too early to be made at this point. Now let's proceed to the next table. This table is called the BOSS test of equality of covariance matrices, and this table provides the statistical information to judge whether the covariance matrices of the dependent variables are equal across groups. This table helps to determine whether the assumption of homogeneity of variance-covariance matrices is met. Accordingly, if the p-value is greater than 0.05, then the condition is met. Otherwise, it is not. But as you can see, the p-value in this table is 0.569, which is greater than 0.05. This clearly indicates that the condition for homogeneity of variance-covariance matrices is met or satisfied. Based on this finding, you cannot proceed to the multivariate test table. In this table, you should only be consigned with the section that has your independent variable, which in this case is fish. Here, there are four test statistics such as pillar stress, weeks lambda, hoteling stress, and royal's largest root, and you are only required to interpret or use only one of them depending on whether your dataset satisfied the assumption. So basically, if your dataset satisfied the assumption, then interpret and use the weak lambda. Otherwise, interpret and use the pillar stress. But since my dataset did satisfy the assumption, I will go ahead to interpret and use the weak lambda. Weak lambda is a test statistics that measures how well a set of independent variables can discriminate between different groups of observations in MANOVA, which lambda ranges from 0 to 1. As regards, a small value of which lambda close to 0 indicates that the groups are well separated, while a large value of which lambda close to 1 indicates that the groups are poorly separated. So as you can see from this table, the value of which lambda is 0.923, which is very close to 1, indicating that the groups are poorly separated. The F ratio is 1.149, and the P value designated as XIG is 0.337, which is greater than 0.05, and this indicates that we do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis 
because there is no significant difference among the weight of fish. However, the partial ETAR squared expresses the amount of variance explained, and as you can see for Wings lambda, the partial ETAR squared is 0 0.039, which accounts for only 3.9%. This means that the amount of the variances explained by the differences in the weight of fish is small and insignificant. So there is no significant difference among the weight of fishes. The next table is Levin's test of equality of error variances. In this table, your interest is to look at the p-value designated as SIG. If the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then the assumption of homogeneity of variances is not violated. Otherwise, it is if the p-value is less than 0.05. But as you can see from this table, the p-value for weight based on local feeds is 0.092 and for weight based on foreign feeds is 0.883. These two weights are greater than 0.05. So the condition is met and we can therefore proceed to interpret results of the next table called test of between subjects effect. In this table, our row of consign is the fish row. So as you can see, the p-value designated as SIG for weight by local feeds and weight by foreign feeds is 0.316 and 0.369 respectively. These p-values are greater than 0.05, which means we do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis because there is no statistically significant difference among the weight of fishes. Accordingly, their partial ETA squared, which gives account of variance explained, is 0 0.040 and 0 0.034 respectively, which account for about 4.0% and 3.4% respectively. As you can see, the amount of variance explained by the difference in weight is very small and therefore are not significant. The next table to interpret is the estimated marginal means table for fish. This table contains the exact results information as contained in the descriptive statistics table. However, the estimated marginal means of the weight of the fishes based on local and foreign fish are relatively the same. The next table is pairwise comparisons. This table provides the pairwise comparisons of the pairs of fish based on the local fish and foreign fish respectively. As you can see, the p-value designated as SIG are all greater than 0 0.05, and this shows that we do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis because there is no significant difference between the pair of fish weights. Now, let's proceed to the postdoc test table for multiple comparisons. Postdoc test is a test that is carried out to show where the differences lie if there is a significant difference in the maneuver analysis results. To identify where the significant differences lie, the value under the mean difference column will have asterisk marks and the p-value column designated as SIG will have values less than 0.05 for pairs of comparison. But as you can see, there are no asterisk marks anywhere in the mean difference column and the p-value column has significance level greater than 0.05 for all pairs of comparisons, indicating that there are no differences anywhere between the pairs of comparisons. This is also explained by the homogeneous subset tables. As you can see, there is only one subset column for the weight of fish based on local feed and the weight of fish based on foreign feeds. This means that there is no significant difference between the weights. This is how to interpret the results of one-way multivariate analysis of variance in SPSS, and I hope you will be able to replicate this procedure to interpret your own data. But right now, we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video and you want to see more video contents like this, please like this video by giving it a thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel to receive notification every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription. Thanks for liking this video. And I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.